hello one and all to another episode of Deep Lore. Today we're going to be discussing the bizarre roller coaster ride of the 1900s between scientists trying to discover a way to keep water a liquid at negative temperatures and the tense paranoid behaviour between the USSR and the western world throughout the Cold War. The perpetrator's name? Polywater. Before we dive in I just want to say thank you for all the support I've received all of which helps me with the cryptic YouTube algorithm, which in turn keeps pushing me to make more content. If you're new here and you enjoy this kind of content, please consider subscribing and liking, and sharing this with others who love a bit of conspiracy in their life. New videos every Wednesday and Sunday, with some smaller videos on random days. Thank you. We start way back in the 1920s, with a series of obscure papers hinting that water would sometimes act unexpectedly when in certain conditions. A chemist called Walter A. Patrick, who was well known for creating the patent for silica gel in the 1980s, would note that upon using the gel to soak up some water and then evaporating it away to reuse the gel, sometimes there would be some water inexplicably left behind. At this time, Walter was a professor and one of his Russian students, Leon Shashevsky, decided to write his dissertation on the strange phenomenon. Leon conducted an experiment where he trapped tiny amounts of water in a glass tube and attempted to evaporate them. Like his professor, he noticed that there would typically be tiny amounts of water left within the tube. This caught the attention of Soviet scientists who tried to replicate the results, and in 1949 proved that it was not the glass tube affecting the results, and the water would remain when the experiment was conducted on a lens instead. The scientific community was confused by these results. However, a man called Nikolai Fedyankin, a Soviet scientist in 1961, managed to isolate the strange liquid. He did this by changing the previous scientist's experiment slightly. Instead of just trapping water into a tube, he put a series of tubes above a pool of water within a chamber. He then created a vacuum in the chamber, which caused the water to evaporate into a gas and then cool and condense in one of the isolated tubes. This ensured the purity of the water, as any contaminants would be left behind at the bottom of the large chamber. He then left the tubes for a few hours. After he returned, much like the previous scientist test, he discovered that the ends of the tubes would contain a tiny amount of a mysterious oily substance. He coined this substance offspring water for lack of a better term. The mystery was deepened when he conducted experiments regarding the properties of this offspring water. He discovered it was 10 times more viscous than normal water and 40% denser. Instead of freezing at 0 degrees C, it formed a brown glass slate at about minus 40 degrees C. Instead of boiling away like water at 100 Celsius, no matter how high it was heated, it never evaporated. It appeared as small beads, like baby oil. Nikolai seemed to have created this substance in his lab, completely out of thin air. Nikolai published his findings in the USSR in 1962, and then shared his research in 1967 at an American research conference. The scientists at the conference appeared not to be too interested in this discovery, and almost treated it like a joke. That was until a British researcher called L.J. Bellamy reported that he repeated the experiments a year later and got the same results. A Western scientist called Robert R. Stromberg decided to start investigating this phenomenon. He teamed up with another scientist, Ellis Lippincott, who at this point had one of the two microscope spectrometers in existence. They used the spectrometer to conduct more research into the chemical properties of offspring water. They discovered that this material was completely unique when compared against a database of 100,000 other substances. It would also appear that the molecules bonded in similar ways to water in linked hexagons. With the publication of their paper in 1969, they decided to come up with a more fitting name, polymetric water, or polywater for short. This new discovery took the world by storm. 
Everyone was amazed by it. How could it have taken this long to find something that can be created so easily? In fact, it was so easy to create that a science magazine called Popular Science published a step-by-step -step guide called How You Can Grow Your Own Polywater. The scientists behind the work in the US had dozens of interviews with newspapers asking about this strange substance, with many speculating that the work of both the Soviets and Western world could lead to a Nobel Prize. Scientists in the manufacturing sector were amazed by the discovery and began to question the commercial potential of polywater, specifically as a lubricant or a means of desalinating seawater. It went as far as a Defence Advanced Research Projects Agency awarding a grant of $75,000 to a lab in Boston to mass-produce polywater. Then, the CIA got involved. You see, the discovery of polywater was at a somewhat unfortunate time in the 1900s. Firstly, the Cold War was well underway, and this was a joint discovery between the Soviets and Western world. Secondly, it was still not fully understood what polywater was, or how it can affect the world. And lastly, about six years prior, there was a book called Cat's Cradle released. How is Cat's Cradle relevant to this story? Well, it's a satirical novel that focuses around science fiction elements, and in this book there is a mysterious element called Ice-9, which appeared to be like normal water molecules, however, they are in a constant structure that would result in freezing at room temperature. As Ice-9 molecules touch normal water, it would create more Ice-9, to the point that licking a piece of Ice-9 would cause all the water in a human body to freeze. At the end of the book, a small piece of Ice-9 is inadvertently dropped into the ocean, causing all of Earth's water to freeze in an instant, and the ending of majority of the life on Earth. I'm sure you can see where this is going. With the fear of Ice-9 ringing in the ears of the CIA, and the heightened tensions of the Cold War, alongside the prevalence of mutually assured destruction, there was a fear that both the Soviet forces and the Western forces, having this substance, could recreate the effects of the book. The CIA would always be close by when polywater was discussed in a formal setting. One scientist published a letter which argues that polywater could be the most dangerous material on Earth, and that scientists should treat it as the deadliest virus in existence until its safety can be assessed to be nothing like Ice-9. He believed that Earth could become like Venus if the substance got out of hand, which he believed is what actually happened on Venus to become the desert it is now. Other scientists believe that it did already exist in nature, just in small quantities, and if it hasn't destroyed the world yet, then chances are it's pretty safe. In 1970, many scientists tried to relate polywater with occurrences in nature. In fact, there were over 100 scientific papers published that year alone discussing polywater. Some argued that it was polywater that gives clay its properties. Other argued it accounts for the ability of wheat seeds to survive in frozen ground in the winter or how some animals can lower their body temperature to less than zero degrees C without freezing. Scientists held a note of scepticism, even when they managed to create polywater themselves. It was just so bizarre and unexplained that surely there must have been something that went wrong. This leads us to a scientist called Dennis Russo, who finally managed to figure it all out. He followed the same steps as all the other scientists in creating polywater, and sure enough, it worked. He then conducted the same investigation as Ellis Lippincott, and attempted to get a spectrum reading of the sample, and the laser burnt the polywater into a black char. Strange, one of the most important parts of the first paper in 1969 was the structure but it would appear to be impossible to get a reading if the laser kept ruining samples. They found that one of the original Soviet scientists noted sodium contamination in the early samples of polywater. 
However, this was only published in Russia, so US scientists didn't know of it. Dennis then decided to conduct a test for sodium within the polywater samples, and every sample they created and tested showed the presence of sodium, calcium, potassium, and chlorine. How did contaminants make it into samples that were intended to be pristine? Dennis had an idea. He went to some of his old sports gear he had in the lab and squeezed some of the sweat out of the t-shirt and ran some spectrum tests on it to determine the pattern. It would appear that Polywater and his sweat had almost identical patterns. That's right, the thing that left the world amazed caused the CIA and no doubt the Soviet government to have a fear about a strange compound and generated huge amounts of government grants given to labs was just sweat. It was determined that small amounts must have travelled via water droplets into the samples being prepared. You must understand this was long before labs had laminar flow throughout to carry contaminants out through vents. But for something to go so wrong that caused a 40 year confusion was a huge slip up. In 1971, Dennis published his findings. There were first some resistance from others stating that Dennis's samples were contaminated, but theirs were not. However, this was shut down pretty quickly. After that, there was very little resistance. People realised their mistake, and perhaps because of shame or embarrassment, they stopped defending polywater. Another invention, dead. Polywater then was completely forgotten, but the results of the mistake was not. Arguably, this was a great push in the scientific sector to ensure all tests were as accurate as possible, in addition to not publishing results with a catchy name and ways that can change the world until you are completely sure of what you have. Naturally, conspiracies start to roam about substances like this, and I believe this is why this was on the conspiracy iceberg. What if this polywater was actually as dangerous as the CIA believed? In the height of the Cold War, it would be best to get people to stop talking about it or researching it. What better way than to underhandedly humiliate scientists by implying poor scientific etiquette? Perhaps the scientists were all in agreement that it should be hidden from the public, and the whole, it was sweat, was for the public's benefit, as polywater was talked about in many news articles, and the CIA knew the general public couldn't verify the claims. This is just me spitballing here, but considering the other conspiracies around the government, I think this is why it was added to the iceberg. Thank you for watching this episode of Deep Lore. Hopefully, it's left you wanting to view more content. Please leave a like if you enjoyed it, and subscribe if you haven't done so yet. I would appreciate it if you could share it with your friends. After all, why leave the comfort of the VCR when we're only at the tip of the iceberg? There are still plenty more video cassettes left to watch.